Coming up, we all know police officers and firefighters drive on the road, but what happens when there's an emergency out on the rails? From firefighting trains to specialized high rail trucks and a police caboose? We'll look at all those machines and more next. There is no doubt, railroads have a lot of land and equipment that needs to be protected. Whether it's wildfires threatening the right of way or thieves who want to steal a customer's cargo, railroads have to be prepared for it all. And they have a wide variety of trains and specialized vehicles that help them get the job done. However, we'll start with an unusual machine that isn't manned by police officers or firefighters, but it does have a siren and it does start and then put out its own fires. <laughs> The blast of that siren tells the general public this thing is about to go to work. You're looking at the Laram Rail Grinder. From lights to horns, the train has a variety of ways to get people's attention. Today, two of Laram's grinders are working in and around Tucker, Georgia on CSX's Abbeville subdivision. To put it simply, they help extend the life of the tracks out here by restoring the profile of the railhead. The longer train handles tangent and curve track, while this shorter train grinds grade crossings and switches. I actually did a full video about how these things work. Look for that in the end screen of this video. Of course, grinding steel rails creates a whole lot of sparks. and sometimes debris or dry vegetation can catch on fire. That's why Laram's rail grinding trains carry thousands of gallons of water with them. That water comes out under the train, on the sides, and at the front and back. Oh, and if there's a fire they miss, there's a team of high rail trucks equipped with firefighting gear following the rail grinders that'll take care of it. This is a pretty amazing operation to see in action, but if you see it, make sure you stand a safe distance away. You know, where I live in Georgia, railroads are rarely threatened by fires, but it's a different story in the Western United States. People are often forced from their homes and displaced because of devastating wildfires. Railroads do their best to prevent those fires from affecting their operations, and as you might imagine, over the years, those companies have developed specialized trains to help them combat the blazes that are becoming more and more common. Fighting wildfires is a tough and dangerous job, but wildland firefighters with the U.S. Forest Service risk their lives every year to do it. The footage you're seeing is from the Cedar Creek Fire in Oregon, which started after a series of lightning strikes in August of 2022. Union Pacific brought in this train to help firefighters and to protect its rail line. The train can carry around 100,000 gallons of water, which is shot out by several water cannons on board. All the rolling stock here appears to be ex-Southern Pacific. UP also deployed a much shorter firefighting train to the Plumas National Forest in California in August of 2020. Railroads have used their trains to fight fires for more than 100 years. Here's a shot from the early 20th century showing a Southern Pacific firefighting train somewhere in California. One of the other responsibilities of these early trains on the SP was to protect wooden snowsheds from catching fire. BNSF also uses firefighting trains. This one is spraying some kind of red retardant on the rails, bridges, and other railroad infrastructure. The one you see here uses older rolling stock, including a caboose, but they also have a more modern train. I think we can all agree, firefighters have some pretty cool gear and vehicles. From tankers that can carry thousands of gallons of water, to engines that pump the water and get firefighters where they need to be. And of course, huge ladders that extend several stories up. But their rigs can't go everywhere. What if flames start to spread through a rail tunnel? Well, that's where the Swiss come in. They've built machines that are like fire trucks on rails. These are designed to work in the many tunnels on the Swiss Federal Railways. 
They can fight fires and have tools on board to help responders render aid and rescue stranded passengers. The older generation trains had multiple units that were pulled and pushed by locomotive, but the newer Swiss equipment is self-propelled. You probably won't see any trains quite like what they're using in Switzerland here in the U.S., but spend time around the tracks and you're bound to see a vehicle like this, a pickup truck outfitted with high rail gear. On the rails, these are used for inspections and maintenance, but a couple of transit police agencies have acquired high rail trucks to respond to emergencies. They're used to reach locations that rubber tired vehicles just can't access. When there's an emergency, seconds count. Lights and sirens help get first responders to the scene fast, but what if the place you need to be is somewhere on a transit system's rail network? Well, that's where this truck comes in. It's used by the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority's police department. They call it a rail rescue vehicle, or RRV. Police agencies around the country use armored trucks like this in risky situations, but this one has an extra feature that separates it from the rest. Yep, on the front and back, you can see it's got high rail gear installed. MARTA trains ride on and through all kinds of infrastructure, from ground level lines, to elevated structures, and tunnels. So basically, the RRV can go places a normal police car or tactical vehicle can't. And this specialized truck is used by a specialized organization within the MARTA Police Department. It's known as SORT. That stands for Special Operations Response Team. Think of it kind of like the MARTA Police Department's version of SWAT. Now, let's take a look at some of the features on this beast. It's called a Bearcat, and it's made by Linko. It's hard to tell, but it's based on a Ford Super Duty truck. Like any other emergency vehicle, the RRV has lights and sirens. But here's something most police cars don't have, a thermal camera system. It helps officers see in the dark. Of course, this thing is also armored. And it has a rotating turret at the top. And check this out. It looks like the tailpipe has some protection too. Hopefully, there aren't any life-threatening situations that this truck has to respond to, but the officers with the MARTA Police Department and the Special Operations Response Team are certainly prepared. We're customer-centric in, in the sense of we're there for the patrons when they need us, if a situation requires it. So yeah, we're there. New Jersey Transit Police have gone even bigger than a Bearcat. This is one of their high-rail rescue trucks. They're built by Pierce in Wisconsin. This truck also has EMS and firefighting capabilities. Pierce showed this thing off on its TikTok account. The video got a lot of attention and I think you can see why. I can't say I've ever seen anything like this going down the rails before. If you live in a big city, you may be familiar with transit cops, but what you might not know is that many large freight railroads also have police forces of their own. Privately employed police officers, known as special agents, basically fight crimes committed against the railroad like theft, vandalism, or trespassing. And yeah, in most of the U.S., they have real police powers, meaning they can make arrests. Most of the special agents I've seen lately drive unmarked SUVs, but a few decades ago, on the Southern Pacific, railroad police rode in style. And this is the ride I'm talking about, a bay window caboose. The lettering and emblem here makes it clear who's inside. Southern Pacific special agents would ride in these, protecting railroad equipment and cargo. According to Athern, who made this HO scale model, these special cabooses came about in the late 1980s when trains became the targets of thieves who would break into rail cars. And by the way, this was not an old school caboose. It had air conditioners on top and spotlights all around. Its red marker light is here on the roof, along with this radio antenna. And if you're wondering how modern cabooses got their electricity, well, they had special generators that spun with the wheels of the car. Okay, so there's one railroad that's gone even bigger than a high rail truck or caboose. Yeah, I'm talking about a big six axle 4,400 horsepower locomotive, but this machine doesn't fight crime or respond to emergencies. It honors our law enforcement. It doesn't have a siren, but the horn will get your attention. CSX revealed this specially painted GE ES44AH in 2019. They call it the spirit of our law enforcement. They even went to the trouble of putting the engine's road number on the roof, just like a police car. Its side cab windows also feature a black and white flag with a blue stripe. 
from some of America's finest to some of the bravest. CSX also has a locomotive honoring firefighters and other first responders. As you'd probably expect, it's painted like a fire engine and numbered 911. CSX calls this the spirit of our first responders. It was also revealed in 2019 and is a GE ES44AH. The back of the engine reminds us to never forget what happened on September 11, 2001. And if you look carefully on the side of the locomotive, the number 343 represents how many firefighters rushed to the World Trade Center that day and never came back. Firefighters are called out to all kinds of situations and sometimes that includes emergencies on the railroad. Well, because of that, some companies have developed specialized trains that train our first responders. This Electromotive Division, GP38-2, along with an SD60E, both wear striking paint schemes. The engines pull Norfolk Southern's Operation Awareness and Response Train. The two locomotives and the specialized cars they haul tour the Norfolk Southern system, teaching first responders how to deal with emergencies on the railroad. I caught the train back in May of 2023 as it was heading to a training session in East Point, Georgia. The consist has special box cars where first responders can take classes. They can also get on top of and even go inside one of the tank cars, in addition to getting their hands on various fittings and valves. Plus, they get to experience the inside of a locomotive. First responder or not, if you see it, this train is something you'll remember. I hope you've enjoyed this special look at police and firefighting trains. I'm going to leave you with an epic horn and siren salute to our first responders that I recorded in June of 2023 at the North Carolina Transportation Museum. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.